Oh shit! Oh no, what are we gonna do now, Christian? We are going on a test drive to the Alps with an unproven engine we built and full restoration of my Discovery Swing. We only drove it to two kilometers that way and back two kilometers and nothing else. So it's an unproven everything. And now it's a ton heavier because it's fully loaded with all my camping gear, my bike, my rooftop tent and my rooftop box and my camping kitchen, everything is in here. So it might be a short trip or it might be a long trip. We don't know. So it's nine o'clock in the morning and we are ready to go on our shakedown run. First, we're gonna drive down to Bado Neccia and from there, we're gonna go and find some unpaved roads where I got her mountain bike. I got about twice as much tools as I normally have with me because it's a shakedown run. So up there, we got our diesel heater and we got the sleeping bags in there. So the lightest stuff goes up in there and hope this thing is not gonna fail. I think I'm gonna have to get air first. So I got this all done, all aired up. Mall crawler is here safe in my garage since five or six months for the first time. Most important, gap tool. Coffee. I reset the trip computer so that we get the average gas consumption later on. I know that's not accurate, but I know what it was before. And right now we still got a rattling up there, yeah. maybe some... It's not some, a wind noise, it's yeah, a rattle, we gotta stop and... Okay, that's our first fill up. Diesel. Mm. So let's look at that noise on the roof here. Yeah, I didn't pop in our diesel heater hose. She had to get two pretzels at the gas station. We are about 12 kilometers from home. And now she's got the eggs out. Yes, but I had breakfast at 5 o'clock in the morning. So a big portion of our trips is driving on the autobahn. That's why we need an autobahn capable rig. That's really important. And uh, we don't have any corrugations over here, okay? So we have to run also full air pressure. Today, this is an 800 kilometer stretch to get to our final destination. Right now, the GPS says seven hours and 58 minutes. So Christian made me get the fire extinguisher. Not because there's any cause for it. If the car is gonna go on fire, it will be now on the first few kilometers on the autobahn. Oh my God. So that is the doomsday prepper box for Land Rover owners. <laughs> because the brake pedal is sinking in a little bit, I want to make sure the brakes are not getting hot. Because that's usually the first sign of a broken brake booster. 75. Whoa. So it's good. Oh, okay. I mean, 60. You gonna keep this one in the front? In case we have to extinguish a fire. Keeping an eye on our temperatures here. We got 91 degrees coolant and 99 on the oil. So that's about perfect, I would think. Because we're driving in Switzerland and it's so damn boring that you gotta do other stuff. This time we didn't have to get a sticker for Switzerland. Ours is still valid. Ah, even the tunnels are clean here. Even the gap is poured. We're going only a hundred, okay? And a hundred in Switzerland means a hundred. And not a hundred point five. You don't have to leave the left lane. You can stay in the left lane with an old discovery at all times. And you're not even the slowest. You want to drive? It's boring. Yeah, I can drive. Man, look at these maniacs. They drive in a hundred and nine. Jesus. Oh, here is an exciting event. I, got to turn to page. <laughs> I told you guys before, everything is forbidden in Germany, but in Switzerland, it was never allowed. This autobahn follows the same path as the woolly mammoth took back in the day, and the speed is the same too. I think we got already two thirds. A hundred. So the car drives absolutely fantastic. Driving this car here in Switzerland is like going to the strip club 
blindfolded. So driving in Switzerland saves like 0.5 liters. So the speed limit is not even worth it. We're entering France in a bit. We found a campsite just before it gets really dark and we set up our tent and then we're gonna set the alarm clock and we're gonna continue in the morning. Now the first stretch to this campsite was now 750 kilometers. Absolutely no hiccup, but I'm too tired to inspect now if we have any oil leaks or stuff. I'm gonna do that first thing in the morning. No, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. The only noticeable thing is that it smells like a new car, probably because I accidentally painted stuff which gets hot. 8 o'clock in the morning, after the first night. And whenever we stay at a campground, Christian picks me up at the trash cans. What's the plan for today? Um, we're going to some gravel roads in the Alps, that's all I know. Oh. So Vera donated for the campground here at this mailbox of the tourist office. What, 15 euros? Yes. It had warm water, which is a luxury. We're going through a tunnel here, and that's 51 euro. That's going to be an interesting tunnel. Yeah. Merci. Merci. 51 euro. That's a tank full of gas yeah. in the former days, at least, or in America. Turn the uh, circulation on here. There we go. Let's see how long this baby is. So I think this is one of those tunnels where they take a picture of you at the beginning and at the exit, and then they calculate your speed, what you did in the tunnel. So they will know based on your average speed if you get a ticket or not. You also have to maintain a distance of 150 meters to the car in front of you. Basically everything is forbidden in this tunnel, okay? You gotta really behave. One thing is for sure, that's a bad place for a snapped crankshaft. So now that's our first wooden bridge. Yeah, this could be in Bolivia too. Oh my God. Actually, it's a steel bridge. Yeah, but with wooden planks. Do have a weird noise here on this side, but it's not coming from the engine. The air conditioning is working. Our brakes are nice and loose. Actually, a quite scary road we're taking here. Sometimes it's a little wider and sometimes a little narrower. Cows. We got a clonking noise and uh, I don't think it's our front drive shafts because we replaced them before our rebuild. The only driveline part we did not replace is our cheap Chinese drive shaft below the vehicle, which means it only lasted like, what, 80,000? Which is sketchy and that <laughs> would have cost flat number one. Oh shit. Yeah, that's not Either good. that or that. Any of you guys know how to get to Col de la Cosse? No help there. So that's a French way of a Texas car wash. So hopefully this is gonna take us somewhere now because we want to get to that pass up there. Christian's gonna air down our tires. We don't go all crazy, okay? We don't go rock crawling. This is just a little bit of gravel, and we run here autobahn pressure. Them to my birthday from. Yeah, there. I got him those automatic deflating. And she got them labeled front and back. It's just so the tools don't rattle. <laughs> I'm so glad that car is back up and running. Almost perfect. Almost because of the prop shaft. So we're a little bit lost in the French Alps because one of the big passes were closed and we had to look for another off-road pass and we found one. We found one but it's really difficult to navigate. We permanently end up in some meadow with cows on it and uh, we have to backtrack then a little bit and find the pass. So right now I think we're on the right track. So 
we are at 2,100 meters and uh, that's the final stretch to the pass here. Yeah, so that's why you are allowed to drive on those roads because they are ski areas. Oh, oh. See, nothing bounces, not like in the Tahoe. Tahoe, everything <laughs> launches. Oh, shit. I think our coolant hose exploded. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. fuck. Oh, no, what are we gonna do now, Christian? Ah, shit. And hopefully we didn't already cause a cylinder head. So I got three major fuck-ups in our rebuild. Number one is I confused the washer fluid from the front with the washer fluid from the back. So when you pull the lever, the wipers in the front go on and it sprays water in the back. And vice versa. <laughs> Screw up number two. I didn't close this clamp from the EGR valve here properly. See, it was leaking big time. Luckily, an EGR valve, like I told you guys before, the EGR valve is only used during full moon if the temperature is between 18 and 22 degrees and you have at least two blind people in the car. But the hose back here, that's definitely a screw up. There is a hose blasted off and I don't know how much water we lost. Ooh. It's quite empty. We have one Ooh. and a half liters. So Christian's only concern is that the coolant was so expensive. Not that we might have to drive the car home on water. No, that's not a problem. So it's definitely a hose clamp, which I didn't see correctly. Oh my God. But of course, it's really difficult to get to now, like everything in a discovery. So that is actually, Christian, our very first trail site repair. Well, caused by me. Let's hope we didn't cause any further damage. I'm not going to take that engine out again. <laughs> I'm not going to do gonna that. push it off a cliff. Yes. I could pull the hose up and you can clearly see it never slipped back this far. So I never seeded this hose clamp. We are in a ski area. I don't mind spending the night here if Christian takes all day to fix that problem. With a fully stocked fridge, all the tools we need. Here are my spare parts now because we need easy access. <laughs> we even brought coolant. If that would happen in America, in the US, even off-road, there would be a Napa store close by. One time the Chinese didn't screw something up. This thing is excellent. And Christian bought it 10 years ago and only remembered last year after I wanted to buy a hose clamp clamp <laughs> that he had something like that. So now, now we're going to fix the EGR clamp. Which I think popped open, okay? So I don't think it was like this for the entire track. Don't drop it into the oil filler. It was pushed out a little bit. Oh, okay. And you can see it's leaking. Yeah, at home we got Oh, them. great. So we don't have... Yeah, and we're going to check the oil now. If we have a, a cylinder head leakage. Yeah, if we have a cylinder head leak, we would have some blow-by. Yeah. And that could get our cooling system over-pressurized. And the engine badly damaged. And the car pushed off the cliff. Yes. Anybody wants to have it now? No. I got only one and a half liter of coolant with us. I'm gonna put this in and the rest we're gonna to have to fill with water. But luckily, it decided to fail right here next to a stream. It's good enough to start it up. That was not nice. And he didn't like to start. Okay, I'm officially stressed now. I think I'm going to ride my bike from now on. I'm in charge of filling up the water. So I think it's just terribly overheated and it's not circulating the water. Look, there's still steam coming out. It's like an old steam engine. Yeah, see? Oh my god. And we still have to go up a ways. The cooling system needs to be working. Otherwise we have to turn around and go downhill. For 50k. There's really hot steam coming out. So hopefully we didn't blow anything up. Oh my god. But the root cause was I didn't seat the hose clamp right. The water is not circulating. The water is not circulating because it's overheated right now. So we have to wait until the engine is below 100 degrees so it can circulate it again. 
glad not one of those commercialized convoys came by full of Toyota drivers. <laughs> I don't know why Toyota drivers can't do that on their own. Looks like it's circulating again and it's not bubbling anymore. And the water level is normal and the cooling fan turned down. So. Nothing is leaking. It takes a while to fill up 13 liters, but we lost it about a half mile back. I tell you guys, that was a scary moment for me. I know you all think I'm some sort of an experienced car mechanic, but no, I'm not. I'm also doing many things for the first time and I never had a coolant problem. My way to avoid coolant leaks is simply by doing everything perfect and maintaining the vehicle. But what to do when there's actually something happening on the trail, I'm not experienced with. And somebody just had tears in her eyes. <laughs> My EGR valve was badly leaking here. And the car still didn't burn down. The thing is, Christian knows how to handle a problematic situation. So, you know, he doesn't panic. And then he has a, a hit list in his mind, which he has to work through. And then he finds a problem and everything works out again. Yeah, so in my professional life, my role is it to stay cool if a machine goes down in a manufacturing line and I got the customer calling me. The last thing I want to do at that moment is ask him, did you check if you got it plugged in? So my role is it to say first thing, I'm sorry. That's not supposed to happen. So which machine is it? Oh, the one in this line. Why don't you send me a couple of pictures? What about a video? Did it happen in auto mode or in manual mode? Did it happen after a changeover? Or did you have faulty parts? Did you have a shutdown on the weekend? Was there a power outage? Was there a lightning strike? So my role is it to narrow down the problem so we can take the right actions to fix the machine. And that's what gave me a little bit of experience when my dear has tears in her eyes to calm her down, okay? I could calm her down when the thing is on fire. I could look <laughs> like that I'm gonna be able to fix it. To be honest, the hardest part on this entire repair was to drag my toolbox over there for the thumbnail picture. <laughs> yes! I hope he waits for me. Thank God I ate a muffin. <laughs> uh, we actually had a good chance of detecting this problem prematurely because the heating didn't work really well and also our cooling fan was blowing much harder than it usually does. So we should have gotten suspicious. We got this car for so long, we actually know exactly how it's supposed to behave in this landscape here. I hope you remember just that we just had a coolant hose debacle. I think he completely forgot. That's where we had our incident here in this corner back there where the little creek is going. And that's the road we came up. And we're up here basically at the uh, ski lift endpoint. And look at the surrounding view. I mean, just imagine how amazing it would be to go skiing here in the winter time. That's the way where we want to go. Yeah. Very well. Oh, what a beautiful landscape. Yeah. And we are at about 2,300 meters, I would think, right? Yeah, just about. That's a relatively big fox. He's just looking out for marmots. Beautiful. It's actually the first wildlife. I have seen except for marmots. I'm not gonna touch it, but I have to open it because it's not a drive-by. Texas car wash kind of cattle guard. There's an elk, a male elk over there. I can see him running across the meadow. <gasps> How cool is that? We are, of course, broken down again. Well, at least we have a we have a clicking noise. Christian thinks it's a severe prop shaft, but now the entire car is vibrating. Yeah. So there's an elk mating ceremony on the other side of the valley. I'm going to follow them.
Ooh. The drive shaft is quite worn out and we did not replace it, but the transfer case has a huge amount of backlash. So I think it's that chain inside what is knocking against the housing. That's the only explanation I have and it's getting really bad. <laughs> I'm trying to drive without demanding much torque. Um, hopefully we're gonna get up this hill here. Look, the sun is setting very soon. We are always so late searching for camp. Airing down. Yes, we made it up. So that's it for tonight. Vera is gonna make some steaks here and then we're gonna be admiring the cold up here. <laughs> it's October and we are at about 2000 meters. It's gonna be quite chilly, but we got a diesel heater. Oh, that has less alcohol. Oh, the one yesterday was just horrible. Yeah. So we got two steaks. Check this out, okay? This is not making coffee. We allowed to show this here. So see here, I got diesel in this bottle. This is a special bottle for gasoline. And what I've done now is I filled up our diesel heater tank up here. All this stuff got to be out, of course. That's going to be all in the tent. The sleeping bags and everything. And then the diesel heater is here on the outside. And then all I got to do is route this hose here into the tent. And then when the tent is open, all I got to do is move all this through the window in the tent. Can so film you. to my Italian and French friends, can you recommend a beer that is more like a pills? You know? Some beer what doesn't taste like a chemical accident. So it was a tough day. Break <laughs> down with a coolant hose bill and the ETR well. Our transfer case. That's a problem. Yeah, that is still a problem. But now we are up here in the mountains. Oh, I can't believe we managed that today. <laughs> the biggest downside for me was that I confused the wishwash fluid hoses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's Swiss. Switzerland. That is so perfect. <laughs> how do you do that? Look how she hits this. Yeah, but listen, for a British perfect. person, that is too well done. Oh, it's a big steak too. Yeah. Look, you cut the best piece off. Oh, look at the sunrise here. This is nice. We made it out of the tent before sunrise. How is that? Look how the sun already hits the top of this mountain. And yeah, that's the first time I think we really needed the diesel heater. At least I did at four o'clock in the morning. Vera wouldn't have cared, but she's got a down sleeping bag and I don't, okay? And Vera is gonna make some breakfast and we're not gonna show you how to make coffee, okay? This is not a Toyota channel. This is now the right temperature to check the glow plugs. So I hooked up my amp meter to the three glow plugs in one bank. And yeah, it's gonna go down now as the glow plugs heat up, that's normal. So this is gonna be now a little less cause it was already glowing once. Uh, not bad, so I think both sides are working equally. Well, that wasn't the best start ever. The engine sounds really nice and obviously my coolant leak over there is fixed. We forgot our duct tape. That is most important. <laughs> I set up a camera on our transfer case. Look when I stop. So we can keep an eye on it. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I'm in the middle of an Italian town here and I'm gonna see if I can get some oil here. So they got a lot of cool stuff here. Se mi alzi purtroppo si trovano nuovi senza carcasse. 5W90 GL5 oil. That store is about the size of the biggest auto supply store in Germany. It's huge on the inside. And you only bought two bottles of oil. Yeah, because we need 1.5 liters. Check this out. We're in northern Italy and it's 25 degrees. And I got a park brake fault. That sucks. We just can't get a break. <laughs> The temperature of the transfer case, it's less than 100 degrees, so I think that's still realistic. Okay, that's not a problem. So the output towards the front is too hot. So we may have a problem with the transfer case output towards the front. Got the air down again. <laughs> Ah, incredible. So no matter what kind of problems we have with our transfer case, we're going to have to take it down because we forgot to plug in the breather hose and it smells like gear oil inside, inside the, car, the yeah. car. In your world, the breather hose is the reason for the The breather problems. hose is the reason for all of our problems, exactly. <laughs> Check out this road, how it's winding up on the side of this mountain, all nice gravel. So you want to go first and I'm going to follow you like in five minutes, okay? Yeah. It's still uphill for about two kilometers, I would think. This is really steep here and it's at 2,200 meters of altitude and she wanted to go mountain biking. You can see how steep that is. I mean, it's climbing big time. And <laughs> she wanted to go mountain biking. Oh, that's embarrassing. She had to wait for me. There she goes. to go up those serpentines there. I think she doesn't want to ride downhill, so we're going to load up the bike. <laughs> this is going to be our spot for tonight. And it's nicer up here than it is down in the valley, because the valleys are always completely in clouds. So we got up really early this morning to hit the Autobahn to get home. And from here to the Autobahn, it takes us at least another two and a half hours. Yes, our, a kitchen box is our next project. Okay, after, after fixing a couple more engines, yes. <laughs> it's okay for the first time start. Our pressure gauge ain't working anymore. It didn't survive the winter time, so I have to replace this one with a digital one. So we're actually going through the tunnel up here now. Normally we go over the mountain pass, but um, with our weak drive line and our clonking transfer case, 
we're actually gonna go right through here. Wow, there are a lot of signs here. Look how short this tunnel is and it cuts out like 12 minutes. transfer case problems. So there is only one thing important to Vera once we enter Germany and that is where's the first McDonald's? So we on our home stretch after 1900 kilometers we got about 160 kilometers to go and the weird thing is that the Autobahn cured our clicking problem of the transfer case. So right now the car is running absolutely perfect, no more clicking. Gas consumption is, according to the installed computer, 11.1 .1 liters per 100 kilometers. That is better than what it was before when we went on to overland trips. And at least on our way back now, I really, you know, considered it already as run in and I floored it. When we go fast, the car drives better than before. It's more stable on the road. I think we do feel a little bit the new shocks and the new suspension bushings. And also the engine is more responsive. It does feel more powerful. But on regular country roads, it's the same as before. There's no more performance or no performance increase. It's still a 17 year old TDV6. Nothing changed on that. <laughs> yeah. It's going 150 now, so that's way... 150? It's 150 now, look. Oh my God. Way faster than what you can drive in the United States. And this is regular cruising speed here. That is look, fast for that even, car. We're even passing somebody. Yeah, the we're BMW. even on the third lane. Look, so tomorrow morning, first thing, I gonna take out the oil and see if there are any chips in the oil pan. Oh and if there God. are no chips, then the whole thing was a success. And at this point, I want to thank our patrons a lot for their support and we'll see you next Sunday. Exactly. We made it home and everybody can see it's not here on a tow truck flatbed, okay? It drove on its own axles under its own power.